everybody. Greetings to you all wonderful people, aviation enthusiasts, lovers of aviation history. Welcome to today's lesson that is Aviation Literacy 040 and we're going to start something interesting about the airports. We've heard so much about airports and for we the aviation enthusiasts that's kind of our office, that's our playground and that's our everything, even our church if I should even say, I dare say even our, even our church. But the question is what do we all know about airports or what do I want you to know about airports? Okay, yeah. so about the airports. Today we're doing about the airports day one and we're going to uh, look at the evolution of the airports. Okay, are you ready? Don't forget to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell another friend that Captain Amwa is here again with another banger. You don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the not notification bell. Yesterday we looked at um, aviation literacy and we try to build our aero glossary so today is the same thing as and when we learn things about the airport we're also going to learn how to build the glossaries that we've learned about the airports so are you ready we'll start in a moment okay so today we're going to watch a short video clip because there's something i want you to notice in that clip a very short clip and um we'll, after that we're going to uh, start understanding something about airports Objectives for the lesson today, we are going to appreciate the evolution of airports. How did airports come about? We are also going to look at the, the, definition between, the definition of an aerodrome and the definition of an airport. We are going to look at that. Then we will be looking at uh, the main parts of an airport. Whether the airport is big size, small size, as small as a backyard or as big as a city. It has three main parts. We are going to look at it and uh, we're going to um, build more aero glossaries as we go along so today's lesson what i expect of you is that we will we'll understand the evolution we we'll look at the definition of aerodrome and the definition of airport and we we'll look at the main parts of the airport and that will do today uh, for today and we can now build our aero glossaries are you ready stick and stay with me <laughs> What you saw was about the Wright brothers. That's over and over. The first, what we call, self-motorized flight on 17 December 1903. Could you tell me the airport? Did you see it in the video? The name of the airport? Where were they? Where did they take off from? Let me know if you saw something in it because there's something that you are supposed to notice and I just want to see whether you saw the airport which they took off from. Did you see it? Oh, I see. Okay, you can send your comments in the comment drop box. And there's something intriguing about this video that you saw. Actually, no one ever sat down like civil engineers thought of the concept of an airport where it will be a building of where or an area where planes take off and land, went to architectural meetings, sat down, put some drawings together, got civil engineers on board constructed something, launched something. Airports never started that way from day one. So what I'm trying to say is that after the Wright brothers did what they did on 17 December 1903, what happened was other people started to come into this whole aviation craze thing because people wanted to build aircrafts that could outdo the Wright brothers aircraft in terms of time, altitude, and distance. Because we, were, we know from aviation history, which we'll be talking about, discussing in other videos, that the Wright Brothers test on 17 December 1903, the, la the longest flight lasted 59 seconds. So people wanted to say, you know what, I'm going to build an aircraft that could go a little bit longer in terms of time, a little bit faster and a little bit higher than what the Wright Brothers did. So that led to uh, uh, the, the floodgates opening for competition, competitions. But still, it was interesting to know that up until such time, that's somewhere to, uh, to 1904, still no one had ever built uh, an, a structure where aircrafts could take off and land. 
you just look for a playing field look for a place where the wind is favoring and you get your aircraft airborne and you come back to land on that field it didn't have a name it was just like a football park it didn't really have a name and uh, that's how flying started for the first 10 years or the first 10 years of evolution that's from the Wright Brothers Day on 17th December 1903 we'll be doing another video and concentrating more on what happened after the Wright Brothers did what they did but a long and short of my story was as people decided uh, to enter this uh, if I say craze to invent an aircraft that could outdo the Wright Brothers aircraft in terms of height speed and uh, distance and time and everything um, this spot be be became a popular spot. So the issue is that if I build my aircraft and I claim it can outdo what the Wright brothers did on 17 December 1903, the question that someone will ask me is that, what is there to prove? What I have to do is, I have to go on what you call an air racing competition. Air racing competition. That means I take off and there's somebody measuring my height, measuring my speed and measuring my time even though it was done in very if i should say for lack of a better word archaic ways i mean your time was measured uh, your speed was measured your altitude was measured and sometimes you could have four people saying the same thing i have built an aircraft that should outdo what the right brothers did and this and then person b will also say i built an aircraft that outdid or will outdo what the right brothers did so what happens is that we have to put the four of them to races just like athletes so we, these were athletes in the air. So what happens is that I take off, there's somebody measuring my speed, my altitude, my distance. Someone also takes off beside me, there's someone also measuring his speed, his time, his distance. And later, this thing became a popular spot. So in order for me to test the, uh, the performance of my aircraft, we had to go on racing or had to race with other people, just like athletes. So certain spots became very popular. And every Sunday, just like how we, we review football matches and other athletic competitions, people will gather at that place like a picnic and uh, watch this racing going on. Now, aviation started in America, yes, but later the Europeans started to follow suit on what the Wright brothers did some years back. So that spot where we all go and test what our aircraft can do to outwit the Wright brothers home was called air races but in greek air is called aero and racing is called dromos in latin air is called aero or aero and uh, racing is called dromus so as the greek say dromos the latin say dromus so those spots where these individual air races used to take place was called Aerodromos for the Greeks. Aerodromos for the Latin. Remember, if you know a lot a bit about world history, at one point in time, Latin and Greek were kind of the official languages of the world. So that's how come it all came about. But later the Brits picked it up and they called it Aerodrome. So you see the evolution. An air racing point was called Aerodromos in Greek. Then the Latin, we also used to call that same spot, Aerodromus. Then the Brits picked it up and they called it Aerodrome. So from the right brothers' time, we could say that they took off from an Aerodrome, but it didn't have a name. So there was nothing like, I'm going to maybe Kotoka International Airport, I'm going to Heathrow Airport, I'm going to JF Kennedy Airport. None of those things existed in those days. It was just a field, a spot where we all come to test our aircraft through racing. So aerodrome now became an open plane place uh, or an open plane field for takeoff and landing. So let's see, we are now building our first aero glossary and we want to understand the official definition of aerodrome. Even though I've summarized it for you, we always have to go to the reference, which is dictionary of aeronautical terms, okay? Dictionary of aeronautical terms. And our first definition is aerodrome, which is an, a defined area on land or water intended to be used either wholly or in part for the arrival, departure, and movement of aircraft. The term also includes any buildings, installations, and equipment in this area. 
So up until that time, aerodrome was this how it elevated. So remember, from the Wright brothers' point of time to places where we could race our aircraft to test each other's performance to see how I'm outperforming one another, then it was now an official place for takeoff, landing, and any aircraft movement with installations around was now called aerodrome. So you see the evolution. Wright brothers racing, then now any place for takeoff, landing, or movement. The question is, what about airport? So our next aero glossary is um, airport. Now, aviation history, like I promised, we are going to look at aviation history in detail in other videos. But aviation history has it that as these guys were doing these, their aerodromos, Greek, aerodromus, Latin, are you okay? It started to catch the attention of military guys, that's the military people of the time. And they realized that, look, this aircraft could be used in what we call recce or reconnaissance. You just say recce in the military term. It just simply means that the soldiers thought, you know what, I'm beginning to get, uh, you know, some insights from what these guys are doing. I'm going to take this aircraft and let us see how we can use it to fly over certain spots to gather information for our intelligence. It's called recce. Are you okay? So the long and short of it was that the military people got interested in it. Aircrafts were now made for the military, invented for the military use. And if you know your world history from World War I, 1914 to 1919, over 12,000 aircraft had already been manufactured for war. Not only for reconnaissance, but at that time, someone also experimented dropping a bomb from the aircraft to a certain target area. I will say more of this in aviation history. So what happened after 1919 was that World War I was over and at least some thousands of aircraft, that's the aircraft that survived the war, were just idle. And uh, the idea first came to use it for air mail. For those of you who were in the 70s and the 1980s generation, you will know the value of air mail because it was faster to take your letters from one side to the other by air. In those days, remember, no internet, no fax, no text messages, no SMS. You had to take everything by air. So after the war, then the idea of air mail. Then after air mail, then the idea of passenger service came into being. So you can, it's very interesting to know that from 17 December 1903 up until 1919, it was only like 16 years later that aircrafts were now used for passenger service. And one of the airlines which were prominent in those days was KLM, we see today. And from that time on was British Airways, which was called Imperial Airways as of then. So what happened was, um, we began to realize that now that we, began, uh, we are now flying passengers and charging them for our services, that aerodrome or every aerodrome which needs that purpose has to be elevated or upgraded in order to carry or to fly passengers from A to B, those aerodromes needed to be upgraded. And when I say upgraded, it needed other things like fire service, immigration, checking areas, facilitations, and what have you. We'll be seeing more of this in other videos. So any aerodrome which is upgraded to the standard of uh, commercial services, that's flying passengers and cargo, um, that aerodrome is now called an airport. So you really, we, we've learned two glossaries. Aerodrome, which I defined, and an airport is an aerodrome, yes. But this time, because we want to use that aerodrome for flying passengers from A to B, it has to be upgraded. Once it is upgraded according to a standard called an X-14, I also describe it in other videos, an X-14, once it's upgraded, it is now called an airport. So we know the definition of aerodrome, the definition of airport. We've got two aero glossaries. Now, in any part of the airport, before it gets standardized or before it is upgraded to the standard of passenger travel, we have what we call the International Civil Aviation Organization. That is all civil aviations in the world, their headquarters. They have to come and give the airport a name. Are you okay? And they also, after listening to the name, they give it a four-letter code, an official four-letter code to connote the name. We'll be doing more of this later in later videos. Then we have what you call the International Air Transport Association, who also have to give it a name. So an airport has to have two names, like somebody's name and his surname, or somebody's first name and last name. And the first name is what is going to be given by ICAO. 
and Aikewo gives it in four letter codes and Ayata also gives it in three letter codes. So Aikewo's four letter codes slash Ayata's three letter codes. Then the airport now has a name to show that it has passed all the certifications needed to fly passengers from A to B. Now, when we go to an airport, no matter how big the airport size building is or no matter how big the airport land is or no matter how small it is, it ha they have some commonalities. So every airport, in order for it to have passed the aerodrome standard, every airport must have what we call a land side. A land side. Then we have what we call the air side. That's the second part, the air side. Then we have what we call the terminal. So every airport, some of you have traveled a lot, you go to some airports, it's as big as a whole city. You go to some municipal airports or some domestic airports it's as small as someone's backyard. Which, whichever way, every airport has to have three sites. The land side, the air side, and the terminal. Now, a land side is the area which is kind of accessible to even the general public, even those who are not traveling. Are you okay? So yes, you can go to an airport right now. In some airport, you can enter the airport. They have some restaurants and bars at a place where you don't need to travel before you assess those bars. You can enter these bars, sit down, buy whatever you need, and after pay for it, and you know, off you go. So the land side is kind of the commercial part of the aircraft, which is accessible to all. That's both travelers and non-travelers. We call it the land side of the airport. Now, the next part of the airport is what we call the air side. Now, this is a restricted area on the airport to people who have official ID cards and identity cards and passengers who have passed through airport screening. Because as a passenger, as I go through your check-in formalities, you have to go through what we call a security screening point to make sure that the items you have on you, your handbag, your briefcase, and other things, do not have weapons and other dangerous things that can cause distraction. After you've gone through the security screening side, you are now on the air side of the airport. At the security point, non-travelers are not allowed. So if you have somebody come to see you off, he can escort you up to the security point. From that point onwards, when you go through the security, that's it. The one who came to see you off goes back home. So the air side is the restricted area or restricted part of the airport restricted to passengers who have passed the security screening and airport officials with an uh, identity card. That's the air side. And the terminal are just buildings for processing arriving passengers and departing passengers. So you have, you have things like the departure terminal, the transit terminal, and the arrival terminal. They are, they are just buildings to process arrival, departure, and transit. Transit simply means that you came from another airport to a particular airport, but at that airport, it's not your final destination. You need to change aircraft and move to another airport. So terminals are just for areas of the airport for processing, arriving, departing, and transit uh, passengers. I think we've learned a lot today. We've seen the evolution from the Wright Brothers videos you just watched to aero racings, then to aerodrome, then to airports. Then we said airports are given names in the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO code, and the International Air Transport Association, IATA code. Four letters for the, the International Civil Aviation, three letters for IATA. Then these are the main parts of an airport. Land side, air side, terminal. The land side is the commercial part of the air, air, airport accessible to everyone, travelers and non-travelers. The air side accessible to those passengers who have passed security screening and officials of the airport with who have been given uh, official ID cards. That's the air side part of the terminal. That includes where the aircraft park, the boarding gates and other things. Then we have the terminals where we process departure, arriving and transit passengers. I hope we've learned a lot today and we'll see you in our next videos. Keep spreading the message around. Thank you so much. We've enjoyed you.